Hey everybody! Welcome! It is Sunday night at 6 p.m. and it is time for a little inky fun. How is everybody doing tonight? Let me know that you're on. Oh, now we've got people watching. Sarah's here and Brenda. Welcome you guys. I'm going to get myself on my screen here so I can see what's going on. Hi, Julie. Hi, Kathy. Welcome. Hi, Becky. Okay. My computer needs to get up to speed. Hi, Claudia. Beth. Oh, there I am. <laughs> My computer was fine. It was operator error. Hi, Brooke. Whoops, sorry. Oh, let me hit the mute button there. There we go. All right. Mickey K, so glad you guys are with me. I hope you guys had a good week. Did anybody do anything really cool this week? Like I had some people last week that were watching me from their vacation in Florida. <laughs> so it's like, woohoo! That's kind of fun. Well, hi, cousin Cindy. My cousin is watching. Sierra, how is that baby? I bet you she's keeping you busy. Hi, Renee. Hi, Suzette. Suzette is one of my newest uh, demonstrators. She just bought, bought the starter kit for me. Hi, Elaine. Kathy. Let's see. What do we have this week? Let me get my little cheat sheet here. Or maybe if I can get it. Oh. <laughs> Hang on, you guys. We're having some tech technical difficulties. See, I tried to pull my sheet off of there, and then it dropped my whole thing down. <laughs> Hi, Carol. Hi, Brooke. Okay. <laughs> Let's get back to this. Nobody, nobody got hurt. Don't worry. Uh, let's see what's happening. Well, the most exciting thing that happened to me this week is my stepdaughter, Anna, went in and had her surgery to repair her bladder. And for those of you who haven't been following me on YouTube... Um, my Anna had a routine hysterectomy and you know, all those, um, complications they say can happen. Well, they happened to her and they tore her bladder and there was some other issues too. But, um, so she's been living with that since December 6th or 8th. I think it was the 6th and she finally got that repaired and it was a success. It wasn't hundred percent that it was going to work, but so far everything is working properly and she's home and she's feeling way better than she ever felt coming out of the hospital before. So um, that's super, super exciting. And we are so relieved, I can't even tell you, because poor Anna, this has been an absolute nightmare for her and her entire family. Like everybody has suffered. And so thank you guys for your thoughts and prayers and well wishes on Anna's behalf because um, she's doing good. So that's pretty cool. And I see Betty went up north. Good for you, Betty. I need to go visit my mother. So we might be doing that next weekend and um, probably for sure on Easter weekend. I'm not sure. I don't know if I told you guys, but we bought, I, I always like to say I, I bought a um, camper last fall. And it was at the end of like October, I think. And so we haven't even used it. I'm calling it my summer home. Because that sounds fancy, right? <laughs> so we bought a camper. And so I've been doing a little shopping, getting stuff for that. You know, like pillows and bedding and little, you know, things that you need in your camper. And thank you, Darlene. Um, and so I did a little shopping over the weekend. But we need to get new tires on our camper. It's used. And the tires are bad. So we need to get some new campers on it. And new campers on it, some new tires on it. I'm reading and talking at the same time. That's hard, right? <laughs> um, what else? This weekend, I spent the whole weekend cooking, which is very bizarre for me because I don't really like to cook. My husband's been doing all the cooking, but um, with Anna being home from the hospital just on Friday, I called her and said, you know, do you guys need food? Can I make a meal for you? And she said, yes, please. I want turkey and gravy with biscuits because that's one of her favorites that I make. So... I got turkey and I cooked that yesterday and, and then shredded it this morning and made homemade gravy. You know, they get they give you packets of gravy when you buy turkeys. 
I made that one time many years ago and it was disgusting. And I thought, why am I making a homemade meal and then using the crappy processed gravy that they're giving me? That doesn't make good sense to me. I like homemade food without all the crap in it. You know what I mean? So throw that packet thing away. Make your own gravy. It's easy. And then I made a chocolate tort. Oh, everybody loves my chocolate tort. And uh, not only did I make one for Anna and her family, but I made one for us too. Yep. My husband, he loves it. But every time he eats it, he's like, oh my gosh, you're killing me. I know. <laughs> what else happened? Um, I've got, I'm on a blog hop tomorrow night. The control, free, control freaks are hopping. And I think... We are, uh, does it have something to do with flowers? I think it's a flower um, is the theme. I can't remember. Gosh, I have my cards made. You'll get to see them tonight. Um, what else can I tell you? Oh, I told you, you guys, I've talked. Hi, Judy Garza. Um, I've talked about the discount shopper kit before, and I'm just going to touch on it a little bit. March 31st ends our promotion where you get up to $246 in product for $99 in our discount shopper kit. Plus, any orders you put in after that, um, you get a 20% discount. There's no drawback to this at all, except you cannot get celebration items with your starter kit. That's it. That's the only drawback. And um, it's a fabulous deal, and I've had a lot of people taking advantage of it this week. I've welcomed Robin. Um, I just saw your name come across my screen a little while ago. Robin ordered her kit and Lori Inder Inderdahl and um, Sherry Butcher and Suzette Lewis. So welcome to my team. I'm glad to have you on here. Whether you're going to be a discount shopper or a business builder, everybody's welcome and everybody gets to benefit from that. So um, $99 for $246 worth of stuff. I see Kay just popped on. She's another one that took advantage of that. So if you guys need any um, questions answered about it, I can send you links. There's a link on my blog in the right-hand column. If you just scroll down, it says $99 kit. There's a ton of information in there that will answer pretty much all your questions. So um, my team is growing all the time. We have grown by leaps and bounds this celebration. And I do put on a Facebook Live meeting once a month that everybody loves. Um, if you're local, you can come to it. Otherwise, you can tune in right where you're at right now. It's pretty cool. Okay, I want to announce winners because who doesn't love to win, right? We have, let's see here. Um, I drew names and we have Mary Olson. Yay, Mary! Mary's from Omro and she was the winner for sharing my video. So don't forget, Kathy Sanford, you have to do it. <laughs> and Carol says you're a super coach, even though, even though you're a discount shopper. Carol, let me tell you a little secret. Most of the people on my team are discount shoppers. You're all important. You're all important. So I'm glad you're enjoying that. Um, Mary Olson, you are the winner. I will be, oh, I'll see, oh, I won't see Mary tomorrow night because um, she can't make it to Stamp Club, but um, I will be giving you a gift. So just know that. That's for sharing my video. Hi, Doris. Hi, Sandy. Thanks for sharing. Um, next, we have Melody Ogle. Yuma, Arizona. Melody, you are the winner for leaving comments under the video. So thank you very much. Uh, oh, Tammy says I need to make the tort for our next team meeting. Maybe I can do that. <laughs> it is to die for. And we have one more winner, and I know she's watching tonight. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Lisa. We have um, Shelby White of Marshfield, Wisconsin. Shelby, you are the winner for... Oh, wait. Melody was the winner for ordering. Shelby is the winner for commenting. So thank you guys so much. I love giving stuff away. And I know I've heard from the people I've sent their prizes to and um, they love getting them. So that's cool. And Becky's on a diet, so she can't have chocolate tort. Becky, I understand. I do because I've been dieting on and off too. And ugh, I hate dieting. I just hate it. I'm just, I, I like to eat. I like to eat whatever I want. And you know what? It wouldn't be so bad if I just get some exercise, but I spend most of my time on my butt. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> oh.
Okay. Um, don't forget, I will, I'll show you the hostess code right now. Whoops, I can't show it to you right now um, because it'll be backwards, but it's GU92TRT4. If you need to place an order, please use that hostess code if your order is under $150 because you'll be entered in a drawing to win a stamp set of your choice. And if it's over $150, don't use the code because you'll get your own stamping rewards from Stampin' Up! And I'll still enter you in a drawing to win a free stamp set of your choice. And I do that drawing at the end of each month. So I'll show the hostess code in a little bit. Right now, if I show it, it's backwards. Silly, right? Okay, so I got to keep our winners there so I don't forget to send out the prizes and let me put my cheat sheet oh it's getting all torn up hang on what else is happening tonight congratulations becky that's awesome 14 pounds way to go i am a little bit jealous we need to talk about what you're doing too hmm. because yeah i need i know i just need to get exercise that's what i need to do what are you guys drinking tonight I've got Pepsi, keeps me perky. Hi, Kathy Miller. Shelby, you're welcome. Yay, you're a winner, woohoo. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is I am going to turn my camera around now and get going on our projects. We are going to play with black ice technique tonight. And I have to say that it is, oh my gosh, <laughs> my husband just came to the window. Go away. <laughs> he came to the window and scared me to death. <laughs> oh my gosh, he's such a character. What was I going to tell you that he said? Something about he was going to unplug my Facebook Live. Oh, speaking of which, let me get myself plugged in here because we know what happened last time. You guys lost me. My phone went dead. Uh, yeah, that was pretty stupid. Oh, everybody's laughing. <laughs> Wine. Excellent. Excellent, Kathy. That's excellent. Um... Okay, turning our camera around, hang tight. This takes just a little minute here. Where's my turny aroundy thing? Oh, there it is. I always have trouble with that, don't I? Okay, and let's get this pointed down. Let's get this out of here. right out of my stand and fell right on the floor. I hope nobody has a concussion. I'm so sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah. Facebook Live. Um, welcome to my chaos. I don't know why. There's, a, there's an app for this where I can get it. I can do all kinds of fancy things for you guys, but I think it's kind of pricey. I don't know. Maybe I should invest in it because I'm Really having an interesting time here. Okay. All right. Everybody is ready. Let's see what we got here. So this black ice technique. Never did it before. Um, I don't know exactly who came up with it, but um, gosh, I wish I could remember the lady's name, but I just don't. But it's really cool. I think you're going to love it. And I'm just going to get out all the supplies that I used here for this first project. I'm also going to bring in my... Oh, look at that. What happened? Hang on. I just lost my live feed on my laptop here. That's not it. There it is. Okay, there we go. Um, I don't know who came up with this. I can't remember the lady's name that I found it, but um, it's a really, really cool technique. Am I in my, yep, I'm in my frame here. I wish I could make this a little bit closer, you guys, but for fear of messing up my feed, I'm just not going to worry about it. All right, first thing we're going to do here, I am using Heartfelt Blooms. Who has Heartfelt Blooms already? This is just such a beautiful stamp set. I've used it several times before. I can't seem to get enough of it because it's so gorgeous. Um, absolutely love this one. Okay, we're going to use this and this. I've worked a little bit ahead on some of this stuff because I don't want you sitting around 
watching me do silly things. Um, so I've got a piece of basic black cardstock that is four by five and a quarter here. And I got out my silver embossing powder and I embossed the heartfelt thoughts with Versamark ink and silver embossing powder. That just saved us a little bit of time because this technique I'm gonna have to um, use the heat tool and I don't want you guys falling asleep on me. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do here is I am going to stamp the inside of my card. This has nothing to do with the black eyes technique, <laughs> but it's just pretty. And I absolutely love Berry Burst. It's one of my favorite colors. Let's see what we got here. And I'm just going to take that and put it right down here in the corner. And if you guys have seen this image stamped, it is just so intricate and de detailed. They actually take a photograph of the um, a bouquet of flowers and then take it into this they take it into the studio photograph it and that is how they made this rubber stamp and that's why it is so detailed and intricate it's just gorgeous this is my stamp and scrub and stamp and mist i like to use that on some of these bigger stamps it's just easier for me and i really need this to be clean before i throw it in my um versamark ink so that's the only thing we're doing with the berry burst ink. Now we're going to come in here and let me think about this for a second. Oh, I know. Where's my glue? I am going to get my glue rolling. Oh, this feels really empty. Oh, here it comes. Don't worry. It's all under control. So it's always kind of a cluster until I get myself set up. Now, oh, I was going to say, I cleaned my bone folder off. I used um, some alcohol on a tissue because it had like little black, I think, glue dots on it. Not like mini glue dots that we use, but just glue that gets on my fingers and stuff. And it was really dirty and gross looking, so I cleaned it up for you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. This is our inside layer, and you guys know I like to just do a little something with the inside, and this was perfect. Just a little bit of that image here, and that is just so pretty, and then I have lots of room to write in here. All right, now, are you ready for the black eyes? What? I hope that this isn't glaring too much in the screen because we are using foil papers tonight, so this is a silver foil paper, and... Um, it might, okay, it looks like it's okay. The glare isn't going to be too bad because I've got lights on coming down into where I'm filming so you guys can see really good. And if I have to, I can turn those off, but I don't know what will happen if I do. All right, next what I'm going to do, never mind the burst mark. We're not using that right now. I'm going to use my archival black ink pad, okay? It must be archival. And just a few tips about um, this technique. You don't want to get your fingerprints all over your foil paper because um, we have oils on our hands and it will leave fingerprints. It's not attractive. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring in a piece of paper here and I'm going to use that instead of holding on to my silver foil layer. I am going to um, press down on that so my layer doesn't move any place. Now I'm going to bring in this ink pad and I'm just going to brush it lightly down my layer. Whoops, you see how it moved there? You see what happened? It moved and then you get that squiggly lines. So you don't want that. So hang on to it really tight. So now I just showed you what not to do. There we go. I'm really kind of catching the edge up here um, that's where I want the majority of this ink to be, but it does put a little bit of ink on the rest of my layer, too. Very, very faint. So can you see that? All right, those squiggles shouldn't really be there. I mean, they're okay. I'm not going to start over. Um, they're going to be fine, but that's not the idea of what I'm trying to do. Again, hold this down really good, and I like to have those edges right there. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to go over to the other side here. It's kind of a little tricky to do this side, just to get that top edge there. Okay, that looks good. 
All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to stamp my image right on this layer. So I'm gonna ink up with the same ink, the black archival ink, and I am going to stamp this right on my silver foil paper. Now you also wanna be careful because silver foil paper, which is hard to say, is a little slippery. So you need to be careful about that, that you don't let it slide. And look at how pretty that is. What? I know, it's gorgeous, right? Okay, let me get the stamp cleaned off right away. Don't forget, this particular stamp, if you're new and you don't know this, this whole stamp set um, called Heartfelt Blooms is free until the end of March with your $50 order. You can get this whole stamp set free. I've got it in wood mount, but you can also get it in clear mount, which is red rubber that will mount onto our acrylic blocks. Um, free stamp set. Don't forget that. All right, so then with your um, black ice, you need to make sure that your ink is dry. So we're just going to hit it a little bit here with the heat tool. And this heat tool, I don't know if you have this newer one. Um, it's been in the catalog for a couple of years, but it has a high and a low on it. I've got this turned to high. That should do it. Okay, I'm gonna close up my black ink here. Now I'm gonna bring in my clear embossing powder. I've got lots of it there. I'm gonna do the same thing with this layer with the Versamark pad. The only difference now is I am barely gonna put any pressure, I'm, I should say not barely, I am not putting any pressure on this when I scoot it across my layer, no pressure. I am just, the weight of the ink pad on here is gonna be exactly what I need. And again, I'm holding it with this piece of paper. Now it gets a little trickier because you, you know, you've got kind of Versamark ink on here, so you just do the best that you can. Then you're gonna bring it in and pour embossing powder on it. Now, what I found is it looks like it's sticking on the whole front. You're like, oh my gosh, did I do it wrong? Did I put too much pressure on it? What happened? But no, you didn't. This is how it's gonna look. So are you guys ready for the magic to happen? This is just like, when, when this happened, when I hit it with the heat tool, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Here we go. Gotta wait for it to heat up just a touch. And once it goes, it goes. You know how embossing powder is. Can you see it turning? I hope you can see it turning. I can't pick it up until it's done. I can't wait to show this to you close up because it is stunning. Now you just want to make sure that you're getting all of it heat set and you'll be able to tell because it'll look glossy. If anything looks dull and a little blurry, that means you did not get that part heated. Okay, look at that. It's just incredibly beautiful. And that's what's called black ice. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I know, right? I love it, love it, love it. Okay, let's finish our card. You can see what I did with my black ice layer here. I am going to put this on the black. Now the silver piece that I'm using is just an eighth of an inch smaller than four inches. So it's three and seven eighths by three and a half. And now you can stick your fingers all over it too. <laughs> Three and seven eighths by three and a half. Thank you guys so much for the love. I need to make sure I'm looking at my um, comments. Thank you, Mickey. It, oh, look at that just, it quit playing again. I think because I'm pushing it up on my screen. All right, here's what I did. I took some of this beautiful Berry Burst ribbon and I am going to add that. And then I brought in some of this. This is our eighth inch, what's it called? Eighth inch 
silver ribbon. Well, that's creative. <laughs> that was kind of snarky. Eighth inch silver ribbon. All right, and I need some tape here. My um, camera stand is a little top heavy, so I have my tape dispenser sitting on the stand bottom so it doesn't tip over and kill us. <laughs> um, so it's a little tricky to get a hold of my tape. So if you want to, you can tape each one of these on here separately. That might be a little easier because, um, as you can see, this is a little tricky. And I think I'm going to do the same thing because I don't want you sitting here for 20 minutes watching me put some tape on some ribbon, right? I always like to use real tape with my ribbon because I don't like my cards to fall apart. And they do if you just use a snail runner and stick the ribbon to it on the back. Trust me, I get a lot of swap cards in the mail and people who do that, your cards fall apart. Stop it. <laughs> Boy, that was pretty bossy, wasn't it? I have been accused of being pretty bossy. It's funny too because my daughter Haley gets, um, she gets accused of being bossy and then I always kind of giggle because it's like, I don't know where she got that from little bossy. All right, isn't that pretty? Just putting that silver right in the middle of the Berry Burst. This Berry Burst ribbon is in our Occasions mini catalog and it is mm, just delicious. Now, I felt like my card needed just a little bit more. So, ooh, look at I'm almost out. Thank goodness I have a couple more rolls. Um, I am going to take my bow jig and I'm going to make a bow, which is super simple with the bow jig. Now my friend Denise has a bunch of these made because I've had people who have asked me for them. And um, if you need one, you can send me an email. My email address is kelly at a stampabove.com. Send me an email with bow jig in the subject line and I will forward it on to Denise and she will take care of you. She has a whole bunch of these ready to ship. And here comes a mini glue dot. Here we go. And I'm going to just put that right over here. I don't want it to cover up my words here, right? Okay, are we ready for this card to be done? I think we are. And see if I can get it on here straight. There we go. Hey, you guys, what do you think? Who wouldn't want to get this in the mail, right? Sending heartfelt thoughts. And what a beautiful um, sympathy card. Or, you know, sending heartfelt thoughts doesn't have to be about sympathy. It can be, um, you know, maybe my friend has a parent that's in the hospital and um, they just need a little pick-me-up. I think this card would be great for that, too. Thanks, you guys, for all the love. And Pat says she can't make bows without it. Pat, I get it. Totally get it. And I can make bows without it. But my whole premise is why would you want to? <laughs> it's just so simple. And they turn out so perfect every single time. All right, you guys, I have something a little different to show you for my next Black Ice card. So let me get this stuff picked up. I'm going to leave a little bit of it out here because we're going to need it again. Let's see, what are we making next? Mm, yep, this is the one. Okay, next, I am using Country Living. This is a fun stamp set. I'm using that in conjunction with the Stylized Birthday single stamp. One of my favorites. I use it all the time. And then here comes all of our cardstock layers. Oh, and I took the greeting, hoping your birthday is as grand as you, from the truly tailored stamp set. I haven't even cracked this puppy open yet to use it, but I'm excited because I'm going to be gearing up for, you know, Father's Day is coming. We need to get some cards made for the men in our life. All right. 
here we go. I am going to get all the elements ready for my card and then I'll show you this neat thing I did with the black ice. This card base is Island Indigo. And then I've got a layer of basic black. And that is, this is four and seven eighths by three and five eighths. And by the way, during the week, I post these cards on my blog where you can go and find them. I post the video there also, and you can see all the dimensions for everything if you want to recreate them. It makes it pretty easy. Um, that's the black layer. This is an inside white layer that's four by five and a quarter. And then I've got my silver foil paper is four and three quarters by three and a half. My basic gray scrap and then this little strip is a half inch and we need it to be about three and a half inches long. Okay. Inside layer. Let's see, where's my island indigo? That isn't here. I put it back. Look at that. I put something away. You know, one thing that's been really nice um, about doing these Facebook Lives is like I have to clean up my office every Sunday. <laughs> it's not such a disaster, right? Because when we start the video, you can see behind me, and I don't want you guys thinking that I'm a hoarder or something. My husband called me a hoarder. <laughs> I'm really not, but he has called me a hoarder. Okay, and then we're going to come in here with the black. Whoops. Sometimes these um, stamps, when you put the labels on them, they don't like to stick really well, so I just put some tape snail adhesive on them. Get them to stick on there good. This is the archival black again. And I just thought it would be kind of cute to put this guitar down in here. And where'd my aqua painter go? Hang on, I had it laying right here on my side. Here it is. I have to move things around for my um, computer. Does the foil have to be silver, Mickey? No, it does not. You can use any foil paper. Um, in a few minutes, I'm going to show you some things I did on, with copper. So, yeah, it does not have to be silver. It can be any color. <laughs> Kathy's a paper hoarder, not afraid to admit it. You go, girl. <laughs> it's okay. I know, you know, I watch that program. I think it's on TLC called Hoarding or Hoarders or something like that. And I'm like, dude, I am not a hoarder. So you just get over that. He likes to say that anytime I want to, like, don't throw that away. We might be able to use that. I'm not real crazy about doing something like that because, believe me, I pitch stuff. I have no issue throwing stuff away. But um, sometimes he likes to throw too much away. And I guess it's kind of nice that he's kind of a neat freak. Kind of nice. Not all the time, though. All right. I keep trying to remember what he said to me today about Facebook Live. Um, something that I was or wasn't doing, and if I didn't do it, he was going to go online and tell everybody Facebook Live was canceled, but I can't remember the rest of the story. He's pretty funny like that. Okay, so I just went out of the lines, which makes me angry, but, you know, it's hard. It's hard to color when you're, when you got a million people watching you. I wish I had a million people watching me. When you've got all these lovely ladies watching me, um, nobody's even going to notice that, right? So what I did was I used a darker concentration for um, these little elements on my guitar, and then I put a little bit more water pooled in here so I could get a lighter color on my guitar. I think it turned out pretty good. What do you guys think? <laughs> Lori, her husband is not sentimental. Everything goes, yeah. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, he likes to throw stuff, but he is very organized. Oh, this was another funny thing. So I was in his kitchen. I cooked in this house for 20 years. But once Haley went off to college, I told my husband, this is a funny story. I told my husband, um, I hate cooking. I am not your mother. It is not my job to take care of you, and I am not cooking anymore. So you're going to learn how to cook, or we're going out to eat a lot. So he learned how to cook, and he made stuffed peppers the other night. I have never even had those. They were delightful. But anyways, he's put these little hooks in to hang the measuring spoons from. Today, when he was unloading the dishwasher, he um, opened up the cupboard where the measuring cups and that stuff is. And he goes, oh, oh, um, since this is my kitchen now, 
Uh, I like this here like this. I'm very particular about my stuff. Little OCD, he said. And I'm like, ooh, I guess so. It was pretty funny because, yeah. <laughs> that guy, I'll tell you. Okay, his kitchen. He can have it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stamp my greeting as well as I can straight on this layer. And hopefully right side up. Yep. I'm just going to do this. Oh my gosh, look how good I did. Whew. That was a lot of pressure, you guys. Lots of pressure. Let me get this cleaned off. <laughs> Yay. When is Steve going to stamp, Rose wants to know. Well, I'll have to work on that a little bit. We've talked about that from time to time, and I think that would be a great idea. Okay. Um, everybody wants Steve to stamp. This piece, the gray piece, I inked up the boots in Versamark ink, stamped them on here, put clear embossing powder on them so they are embossed. And if you can see, they're shiny. And then I cut them out. And I just thought, eh, you don't need to watch me do that, right? Okay, we got that done. Now comes the fun part. Oh, I need that Island Indigo again. What did I do with it? So, you can take any color ink pad on any color of foil paper and you can use it with this black ice technique. Uh, Barbara says her husband cooks, retired after the first 40 years and four kids. I guess he got hungry so he took over. <laughs> he shops too. Yeah, my husband does all the grocery shopping. I absolutely hate it. Does anybody see where my white piece of paper went? And what I did with that. Hmm. Oh, I bet you I put it in that bin that I put all the other stuff in. Okay, here we go. Here's another white piece. Keep my fingers off of here. So, with the Island Indigo ink pad, again, I am just going to... I got that coming down on the edge here. And I am just going to tint... Whoops, there we go. See what happened? Let me see if I can wipe that off quick. Oh, where'd it go? There we go. Yep, I got it wiped off. You've got to hold on to this paper. Because that's the thing that you don't want to happen. <laughs> or that. Let's see what I can do with that. Oh, I just spread it out, you guys. So when you make these colossal mistakes, just keep going. Don't let it bring you down. So now this is got a blue tint to it, which I think is going to be really pretty with our Island Indigo card. And you don't want it to just be all solid. You can see where I wiped it over here. It's not real attractive. But once I turned it blue, then I decided that I really did want that black antiquing look on it. So I have blue on there. Now I'm going to come back in with black and try to hold hold it a little stiller. Is that a word? Stiller? More still? I don't know. Let's do this. And just lightly drag it across the whole thing. Now we're going to do this side over here. Boy, this angle is a little crazy, right? And then we can do this side over here because I want to catch this edge up here. There we go. I like that. That looks good. Okay, now we need to dry it. Don't forget, you need to dry this because it's foil paper. Your ink doesn't dry um, real quick like it does when you're using regular cardstock. That should work. Okay, now we're gonna come in with that Versamark again. I really like the way this looks like it's a, almost a wood grain too with this black ice. So again, don't put any pressure on your Versamark. You just, the weight of the pad dragging across here is all you need. 
turn this around. Whoops. Let's see what we got. The truth is told in the embossing powder. Oh yeah, look at how much is on there. And you can see where there's a little bit missed too, that it didn't get ink, and that's fine. But it makes those like dragging lines, which makes it look like black ice. And I'm, I don't know who named this, but all I care about is that it's super cool. Oh my gosh, you guys, I forgot a step. But I'll show you the um, finished card. <laughs> I was just so excited about doing the ice technique. <laughs> I can use this as a layer behind something. I think that'll be cool too. Because what I was gonna do with it is not gonna happen anymore. Okay, I think I got it. <laughs> Look at how cool it can you got I hope you can see the detail. It's just absolutely gorgeous. It's such a unique look, right? Okay, you want to see what I did with this? <laughs> I'll finish. I'll make another layer like this and finish up the card that I started here. And this, welcome to live TV, right? Holy cow. All right, here we go. Here's our card. I mounted this, I, what I forgot to do was stamp my truck from the Country Living set. And I thought if you're going to stamp a truck, then you need some cowboy boots there. And this greeting for a man card was perfect, but I mounted the silver foil on basic black layer. And then I put it on dimensionals here, so that pops that whole layer up. And then I also put the boots and the greeting on dimensionals here too. So this was the card that I came up with. What do you guys think? I love that. You can see the blue tint to it, too. I guess somebody did one the other day with pink, um, with pink ink. Somebody was talking about pink ice. So, yeah. Thanks, you guys. Oh, thanks, Suzette. If I would have been checking my messages and Shelby, I would have realized that I never stamped an image on there. Yeah, I got a little ahead of myself. But <laughs> thanks, you guys. That'll happen. All right, let's get on to the next one. Like I said, I'll make another layer and finish this card um, a little later after we're done because I don't want you to have to wait through all that again. Okay, on to our next project. Here comes a fun one. This one's also going to be part of my um, blog hop with the um, control freaks tomorrow. Let's get rid of this. We're using a whole bunch of colors here. We've got Flirty Flamingo and Calypso Coral. They're going to be used together. We've got Old Olive. I would have chosen Pear Pizzazz to go with this, but I can't find it. I don't know where it is. Uh, we've got Daffodil Delight and So Saffron also. And then, let's see, we are using the Jar of Love stamp set. Oh my gosh, you guys, there are 37 different images in here. And the Everyday Jars Framelits, let's see if I can get this out of here. Holy cow, there's just a gazillion little framelits in here. So, we are using the large jar. And this row of hearts, which is super, super cute. This big one. This little one. Let's see. These flowers. If I can get them off of there. This big flower. And is that it? I think that's all we're using for this card. So let me put these back in here. Get out all my little things.
Here we go. Okay, I'm going to set this stamp, stamp set off to the side. Get out my card so I know what's going on here. I have a Calypso Coral card base. This is five and a half by eight and a half. I'm just folding it and burnishing the edge. Then I've got two white pieces. One is for the inside, one is for the front. I've got a piece of one and a half by four inch wood paper. This is our wood textures paper stack. You guys, if you do not have this, you need to get it. Kathy says that the Jar of Love was her first stamp set. You picked a good one, I'll tell you. It is awesome. Aren't these pretty? And, yay, you've got distressed, you've got old um, painted white, you've got nice, without any distress, beautiful, beautiful paper. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I am going to do the inside of the card. And I've got all my little stamps here. I chose the greeting that says, throw kindness around like confetti. How cute is that, right? And then I decided that I would stamp a little flower to go with it because I wanted it to be cute. Calypso Coral Ink with this cute little flower, perfect. I'm gonna get a baby wipe out here now so I can get these stamps cleaned off. Somebody asked me last time, what kind of baby wipes do I use? I use Huggies, Huggies One and Done. And I get them at Walmart, One and Done. There's no lint on them. You don't get that lint that sticks all over your um, stamps. I, I love the Huggies One and Done. All right, glue this in place. That's all we're doing to it. You could stamp some more flowers on yours if you want, but I felt that that was all it needed because the front is pretty spectacular. Okay, we'll set this off to the side now. And then I've got scraps here. So here's what I did. Oh, I know. Whoops. Hang on. I forgot to do something. I also have a piece of this paper that I'm going to put on the front of my card, but I want to put this on the inside. Oh, you're welcome, Valerie. Oh, Susan, your paper did not come like a pad. Mine didn't either. It comes loose in an envelope. I put cardstock on here and stapled this, and it's just um, to take to all my classes so my customers can see all the different patterns in this pack. So I actually made this and stapled it together. So mine didn't come in a, um, a pack like you're talking either. It comes loose in an envelope. A clear envelope or a clear bag. Okay, so we've got this decorated. That looks pretty cute. Now we need to stamp up all of our images here. And I just wanted to show you a few tips on these flowers. Um, I'm going to do these flowers first. So it seems like Flirty Flamingo and Calypso Coral would be kind of a crazy color combination, but they're not. They're really pretty together. So I'm going to take these two little images and stamp them. And I stamped them a bunch of times. Then I'm going to come in with the Calypso Coral. Here, let me see if I can. Yeah, this is hard to do by not sticking my head in the camera. Oh, look, I did it. <laughs> I'm on a roll tonight. We'll accept that last card. Just forget about that. Okay. Um, what does our list do? I missed that. I took a pretty plate and one that matches my craft room and glued magnets on the bottom of it and it holds the dies in place. Oh, great idea. Yeah, you want to see what I have? Um, where did my little thing go? Here it is. So it's in a bag right now for other purposes, but this is a metal dish that my friend Barb gave me and it's magnetic. When I'm working with these little tiny dies so that they don't get stuck to something and I lose them, Let's see if I can pick them up now. There we go. I just throw them in this little dish while I'm working with them, and it works fabulously. But yeah, you want to be careful with these little buggers. Okay, so this 
cuts these flowers out perfectly, okay? Then I took these two images and I used Daffodil Delight. Your lighter color is your solid image on the bottom. And I've got soft, or so saffron, sorry, and then Daffodil Delight. And there you go. And again, there's a die in here that will cut that flower out also. Okay, then I have this little uh, succulent looking thing. I stamped a whole bunch of those. Oh, almost forgot. There's a little tiny stamp with four little dots on it. You want to do that in your darker color too. And it makes the little, those little stemmy things on the inside of your flower. I hope you can see that. Oh, thanks Shelby. Yeah, use magnets so you don't lose like these little dies. I have lost stuff before. It's horrible. <laughs> okay, and then I think I brought in some crumb cake, which I didn't have in here. That's what I stamped this little stem with. Um, well, I didn't, no, I didn't stamp this in crumb cake. I stamped it in the olive. Where did my plate go? Right here. Here we go. Olive. Stamp that. Stamp that a few times. We're going to die cut that. And then I have this little thing that I'm going to stamp directly on my layer of cardstock. Okay. Oh, and I'm using crumb cake. Now, I would die cut all of these. And again, I stamped a whole bunch of flowers, a whole bunch of these, like three of these. Die cut all of these with all our little die cuts here. Okay, that's what we're going to do. But through the magic of TV, I already have all of those little things die cut so that you wouldn't have to wait for me to do all that, right? Because that's boring. And I wanted to tell you, the way that I made this card is I actually sat down and stamped and die cut a whole bunch of these little images in the colors that I chose. So I just have all these little images and then I decided to design my card and just started picking and pulling from all of these little things that I have already ready to go. So that's the way I like to design cards and create cards when you have all these little things. It's just to stamp up a bunch, die cut them, and then design your card. Diana says for some reason she can't get on here. Um, if you go, Diana, and look at the 31818 Facebook Live and just click on it, you will see that um, it, it should play for you. Did we just lose contact? Because it seems like I'm locked up now. Can you guys still hear me? Maybe it's just my TV or my um, laptop screen. Let me refresh my screen. Oh, look at that. Oh, so we're still live. Okay, you guys. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what was going on. Okay, so I've got all of this. So I'm just going to set it off to the side. Then I took this layer, and I want this to peek out from behind my jar. So I die cut some hearts on this side, and then I brought it over here and die cut it again, just like that. And it overlaps in the middle here, and it's kind of ugly. And nobody cares. Well, I guess this one turned out pretty good. But all you need is this side and this side to look decent. And then I have um, another piece of Calypso Coral. This is so saffron. And I'm going to glue this on here. And that's going to be a little embellishment on the front of my card. So I'm just going to put a little bit glue dots right between these hearts. So that my orange, maybe if my glue comes out, there we go. Okay, here we go. Add that just like that. Let me put this away so I don't lose it. And we don't need that anymore. All right, then I took a piece of my silver foil paper. I stamped it and die cut it with the black archival ink and this die. 
Let me get these out of the way because the only one I'm going to need now is my crumb cake. And again, I will have all these ink pads. This is another card that's going to be on the Control Freaks blog hop. I will have all the colors and everything I use to make it um, on my blog tomorrow night after 6.45, I think. Okay, here we go. This is what I did. I kind of like to dry fit things to know where I'm at here. This is going to go here like this. And then I'm going to come in with this spriggy thing. And I'm just going to stamp it a couple times. Just like that. And now we're ready for the fun to happen. Get this in place and then we'll do our black ice. Yep, we're doing black ice. Where are we doing it? On the jar. You know those silver frosted jars that you can buy? Or, you know, some people spray paint jars and they make them. Yeah, well, we're going to do that to our jar. Because I thought that was a really cool idea. <laughs> I hope you do too. Oh, yay! Lorraine is here. She's here from the UK, and it is very, very late at night there, like one in the morning. So it's always I'm always excited to see her when she tunes in. All right, here comes my jar. We're going to do the exact same thing to this that we did to the other black ice things, only it's a jar. So I'm just going to come in and drag my ink pad down here so that it makes that black ice look. There we go. Now we got to kind of go to the other side, which is the tricky part, right? And did I get this all? Yep, I kind of got it all done on there. Okay. Then uh, heat set it. And when I say heat set, I'm drying the ink so that it doesn't just smear off when I come in with my Versamark ink pad. Here comes our Versamark. And again, I am just pushing this with my fingernail, hoping that I can hold it still. Ooh, it works pretty good. Bringing in our clear embossing powder. Let me close this up. And then the magic is going to happen. Nope, Mickey, thank you, but we're not stamping on this. We already stamped the jar. <clears throat> Good save, though. I appreciate your help. It's funny, I always rely on my gals at Stamp Club to catch me before I do a step ahead that I can't replace or fix. And they always do, too. They're really good about that. They're like, Kelly, don't forget this. Thank you so much. Okay, now we're going to come in with some dimensionals. And I'm going to add some dimensionals to the back of my jar. Oh, I'll hold it up so you can see the detail on it, too, because it's pretty darn cool. Oh, can you see that? I hope you can see it when I get it up here because there isn't as much light. My lights are down here. But yeah, that looks really cool. It looks like one of those frosted jars. All right. White Baker's Twine. Here we go. I took some White Baker's Twine and I wrapped it around my jar like three times. And I just kind of put it right around the lid or the rim. Just like that. And I decided, <clears throat> thank you guys for the love. I decided that I wanted it to have a really cute triple bow on the front. So I'm just cutting this off and taping the ends on the back. So it just looks like this, okay? Then I'm gonna bring my bow jig in and I'm gonna make a really little bow. I'm gonna make a triple bow. So I'm gonna do one, two, three. And these are super cute. I like these triple bows. And of course, they're super easy to make with the bow jig. I don't know if I've, I don't think I've shown on my Facebook Live, but if you follow me on YouTube, you know this. 
you can take your bone folder and pull on these ends just like your curling ribbon and it gives them a slight curve. Isn't that cute? It just makes them lay nicer. Don't forget to do that. All right, mini glue dot right behind. I'm gonna kind of wad it up a little bit because it's, it's a little bigger than I need or a little wider. And stick this right on my little jar of love. Isn't that cute? Yeah. Okay, rest of the card. Now it goes together fairly quickly. We are going to take the dimensional back off. We're going to bring in a couple of these green sprigs. And I'm just going to, yeah, I wish I wouldn't have glued that on there yet. But guess what? We can just do this. Let's cut the bottom off we don't need it to be that long and I'll just cut a little bit off of this one and I'm just going to bring these in here and I'm going to put a piece of tape on them because I'm a cheater. <laughs> Nobody will know, right? Okay, and now we can bring in our jar and that's going to go right about here. Cute so far, right? And then we're gonna come in with our flowers. Let me see if I can get these all dumped off here because I can't get a hold of them. Okay, the little mini dimensionals are really nice for these flowers. And I'm just going to start popping them on. I've got it going a little bit over the, the rim of my jar, just like a bouquet of flowers would do, right? It would kind of be just a little bit spilling out over that edge. And then some of these are on glue dots and some aren't. Boy, this glue is making me a little crazy. Yep, okay, there we go. We got too much now, <laughs> of course. And you're just gonna glue these right on top of each other. Now I'm gonna come in and we're gonna put some mini dimensionals on some of these little flowers. What color was that one? That one's the, the um, 30 Flamingo and Clipso Coral. And here comes another yellow one. And you're just going to pop these into place wherever you think they need to go. Just like that. And these little green sprigs, I preferred that these were I'm kind of just sticking out here. We'll maybe stick one out over here. Just wherever you think they're going to look good. Tuck them in under the flowers once you get your flowers in place. But I felt like I was a, um, what do they call those people that do flowers? I know, right? Oh, Ginger said it's a faux mercury jar. There you go. Who knew? Who knew I made something so fancy? <laughs> I did not know. I made a faux mercury jar. There you have it. <laughs> uh, it just reminds me of me calling my camper my summer home because that's fancy, right? <laughs> yep. Yep, it is. Okay, here comes another little flower. And then these two are on dimensionals. I'm kind of stacking them. Oop, I think I need a yellow one. Yeah, I think I'll put this yellow one down in here because things are looking a little bare there. Get that tucked right under there. There we go. Okay, that looks good. And how about another pink one on a dimensional? So, um, <laughs> it's a glamper. Yes, Kathy, a floral designer. That's what I am. That's what I feel like. Oh, let's just keep going crazy here with the flowers. They're so fun. Okay, enough flowers. That's it. I'm done. There we go. There's our cutie patootie little bouquet. I'm going to save all these flowers. I can make another card with them. I went through all the work of getting them die cut, right? So I can certainly make another card with what's left over. 
And now we are going to glue this onto our card front. And we have like a stinking adorable faux mercury jar full of flowers. What do you guys think? Yay! Isn't that pretty? Love, love, love this wood. And if you guys don't have the Jar of Love bundle, yeah, I think everybody should have it. It's just really pretty. There's a lot of great things you can do with it. Um, where did mine go? Right here. You get three different sizes of jars, too. And you get a lid for the jar, and there's a die to cut that out, and there's a little um, firefly here. Oh, my gosh. And lots of good greetings. And the fish. You can put the fish in the jar. Which, by the way, my mom had a beta fish that she um, inherited from my sister. Uh, and she first she froze her beta fish. And then they told her to get a heater for him. His name is Bill. <laughs> she got a heater for Bill. And um, then she cooked Bill. So Bill did not survive the heater incident. Well, apparently my mom liked Bill enough. She had him for a couple years, and that's a long life for a beta fish from what I understand. But um, she went out and got a new Bill, and she said, meet Bill too. So now she has another beta fish. It's kind of cute. That's a perfect pet for her. It doesn't require too much, and, well, you hate to see a fish cook. It happens, right? Okay, next card. I have one more to show you. What time is it? 7.06. Okay. Um, I have a couple more cards to show you guys, but I think I'm only going to maybe make one of them, and I'll just show you what I made with the other ones, okay? So this is kind of a neat little, little card. All right, I have taken our copper paper, and I cut out an oval using the layering ovals, and then I'm using the waterfront set. I got this idea from Fish Fry, Lisa says, yes, Michelle cooked hers too. I don't know what's up with the cooking of the beta fish, but it's not good. Um, I'm using the waterfront set on this. I got this idea from Kathy Miller because she was playing with the, um, with the um, black ice technique and she made up some little samples. One of the samples she made used the waterfront and I just thought it was so very gorgeous. So I'm just going to show you a little bit about that. We are going to take our black ink pad again and I am going to drag this. I want it to be horizontal. I always get vertical and horizontal. I think horizontal horizon. So I want it to be horizontal. So I'm just going to pull in my ink pad here from the left. Did you hear how I stumbled? I'm like, is that left? It is left. And then I'm going to turn it around and pull it in from the other side because I really want that. And you can put a little extra pressure on this edge here to make that drag a little bit more, okay? I really like the black on the edge where you do this at. Okay, I hope you guys can see this, right? All right, now I'm going to come in. Oops, I got a dimensional on there, backing. I'm going to come in with these cool little stamps. Okay, first comes my little palm trees. Hang on a second. I can't hardly wait to show you these finished, but I'm going to show you how to do it. And the reason why I thought this was absolutely perfect with these palm trees, and again, be careful because this is slippery is because it looked like a, a sunset and water to me. It was just so, so pretty. So thank you, Kathy Miller. Do you need to dry your ink first? Nope, we're gonna dry our ink in just a second. So hang tight. Thank you though. Thanks for your help, I appreciate it. There's our palm trees and now I'm gonna come in with our sun, moon, whatever you need it to be. It is very versatile that way. Now I'm gonna dry this. This was just really stunning to me that it does look like um, the ocean and the water glistening in the setting sun, I guess is a way to put it. Ah, oh, 
Lisa, thank you. We're going to become drag queens. <laughs> Good one, Cheryl. I like it. <laughs> okay. I think we're done with the black now. Let's bring our Versamark in. My little sheet of paper to keep my fingerprints off of this. And then we're going to turn it around. And again, just the weight of that Versamark pad. You don't want to push on this. Clear embossing powder. Let's see if I can get that edge a little bit. Nope, that didn't get any powder on it. And that's okay. See how there's no powder on this edge up here and kind of down here? That's a good thing. You don't want it just solid powder because that's the whole black ice technique. Okay, wait for this, you guys. Here we go. Can you see that in the light? I hope you can see how really cool that looks. I just thought this was the neatest one with the palm trees. Thanks you guys for the love. Okay, do you wanna see what I made with it? Let me get this all out of the way. Got all my stuff everywhere here. Okay, I'm going to show you this one first. What do you think? I hope you can see how that... Now, when I drug my ink pad across here, if you want to, you can push on the edge of it a little bit. I made it drag a line right down here. So that kind of looks like the line of the sand and then, you know, whatever. But it gave the... Um, oh, thanks, you guys. It gave the uh, trees kind of a beach line there. I thought this was really cute too. Then I used the little houses because um, this reminded me of when we were in Thailand and um, these little houses. There were these little bright colored houses on the uh, the islands. So I thought, well, that's a cute idea. I didn't put anything in this card yet, but um, this is crushed curry and Bermuda Bay that I did with this. And I have another one. Brooke stopped over earlier today and I was unsure what I was going to do with this layer because this was like just a sample layer and I'm like, well, I don't want to just not use it. So I mounted it on Bermuda Bay. I put a piece of our copper foil sheet through the basket weave stamp or um, embossing folder. Remember, this is a bundle you can get with the stamp set for free during celebration with your $100 order. Basket weave. In the background, I put a little half a doily here, and then there's that guitar from the Country Living set. And I hope you can see how cool this looks. Love it! And then here's my inside. Thought that gives me a lot of room to, um, to write a nice message. My my brother and sister in law are just coming back from Aruba today, so I thought, well, this is a fun card. I could send it and say, hope your vacation was great, right? All right, I have another card to show you. I went crazy with the black ice, guys. I mean, I really had a good time. Here is a stainless steel door with the barn door bundle. Let's see, what did I do with that? Oh, I'm going to make a video on this card because I, I'm not showing you how I made this card. Um, we just don't have time for it today but I am going to make a video for this. So watch for that coming out soon. But isn't this cool? This is on a track and it slides back and forth. Hello, I'm so happy to know you. And then I put the boots on the inside. Love it. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, Kay, you have to get the stamp set. It's fabulous. All right, let's see, what do we have here? We have all kinds of fabulous 
black ice cards. I love, love, love when I can grab a technique and just kind of go crazy with it. That's really fun for me. Here comes our jar of love. I absolutely had a blast with these. So you guys, don't forget to share my video. Um, you can click on the share, I believe, right now and do that. And um, don't forget to share on, on my video. You will be entered in a drawing for the comments that you're leaving. And also, if you'd like to place an order, here is that host code, GU92TRT4. And um, if you use that host code when you place your order, you'll also be entered in a drawing to win from my Facebook Live, but my monthly drawing as well. So that's pretty cool. Did anybody have any questions tonight about any of this? I think your best friend with this technique is the Versamark ink and clear embossing powder. And don't forget, you can use any color of ink that you want to. I didn't try the pink, but I did use the blue on here. So that was fun. I, I don't know, which one is your favorite? Which one do you like the best? I would love to know that. Thank you guys for sharing. Woohoo! I don't know, but I think this is my favorite. I think, I don't know. I love this. I love that one. I love the stainless steel door. I don't even know what to say. Like, they're all pretty darn cool as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, this is, this is pretty nifty. Jar of Flowers is your favorite, Lori. Laura. Thanks. The truck card, Samantha. Thank you. Lisa can't decide. Mickey can't decide. Heartfelt Blooms, yep, I really like this one too. I love the look of that. It looks like, I don't know, it looks like wood panels, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't know. Yes, Lori, you do need archival black ink for your base, absolutely. Um, other ink will not dry on here. Like, that'll be a mess. So the archival black ink is the best for this. No, I did not start my Facebook Live earlier. I started it exactly at 6 p.m. So I'm not sure what happened there. Thanks, you guys. Thanks so much. I thought they were pretty, pretty, pretty nice, too. All right. Um, I will see you next Sunday at, well, yeah, next Sunday at 6 p.m. I think maybe what's going to happen is when it starts getting a little warmer outside, I may go to 7 p.m. Central Time because that gives people time to be done with their weekend and um, starting to come into the house. I don't know. What do you guys think about that? A 7 p.m. Central Time start. I'm hoping that'll work out. Um, when it gets warmer, we have Sunday fun day at our house every Sunday. We have a big swimming pool in the backyard. And the kids come over with their kids and we just have a whole day of it. They're usually going home around 6 o'clock. So I'm thinking that might work better for my schedule because I don't want to be going, Okay, you guys, bye-bye. I got to go in the house. I'm live. <laughs> they would be gone then. I think, that, I think that'll work out good. Thanks, you guys. I, I think it's a good idea too. Seven o'clock for summer. And not right now. It's it was fifty something here today, but um it's not warm enough to worry about it yet. All right, you guys. If you don't have any other questions, I am going to sign off. As um always, thank you so much for taking time out of your evening to spend a little bit of it with me. I really appreciate it. I had a lot of fun and you guys are so gracious. Thanks so much for that. I I I feel loved. <laughs> you guys have a great night. Bye-bye.